What's going on YouTube? This is your boy Connell, the Tech Savvy Rider. Uh, today is uh, 16th of January 2021. Glad to be here. Hope to see you all soon. I uh, got some good news. I just got to finish uh, installing the triple setup, triple battery setup on Black Flash and I want to go over it with you all uh, to explain exactly uh, how I got it set up. Uh, but before I go into that, uh, I want to uh, give a shout out to a, another gentleman that I have met. Uh, I always try to help out my fellow brothers. Uh, I met this young I met this young man out in a Wingding 41. Uh, his name is Guido. Uh, Guido is the guy. If you all saw me at Wingding 41 in the light show competition, uh, Guido uh, is the owner of the motorcycle that was right beside me. Uh, he showed up at the light show competition with a music bike. Uh, even though he got lights on his bike, <laughs> his bike took over when he turned his music on. Uh, turned his music on. Uh, so this is a shout out to him. Uh, for all you guys that's up uh, Midwest area, uh, the Chicago area, if you're looking for someone to install a stereo system on, on your bike, no matter what brand it is, he does them all. Uh, he also collaborate with Jay Ford on custom wings. Uh, the custom gold wing, uh, custom gold wing uh, Facebook uh, group. So if you're looking for him, uh, I'm gonna point you over to his YouTube, his YouTube site, which is Guido FTC. Uh, look him up. If you're looking for someone to install it, and you're not uh, coming out this way toward the south uh, to meet up with Jay Ford, remember Jay Ford to go out and pick yours up. Uh, but if you're in the Chicago area uh, and that's around in Midwest area and you want someone to uh, hook up your bike uh, for us a sound system, look this gentleman up. His name is Guido LTC. His name is uh, Guido Schaefer. He's on Facebook. You can look him up on, on Facebook. Uh, here is his YouTube channel. Uh, on his YouTube channel, he shows uh, several competitions that he have entered. Uh, he have took top prize, uh, top place, first place, second, second place. I don't think he went below that because, uh, like I said, his bike is pretty awesome. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube, Guido FTC, or you can check him out on Facebook. Look him up if you're looking for someone to install a stereo system uh, on your bike. Like I said, it doesn't matter what brand. Uh, he works on on them. Uh, he works on all brands. Uh, this is F, that, that is his YouTube channel, and this is his Facebook channel, uh, his Facebook page. Uh, hey, look him up. Uh, like I said, he's in the Chicago area. I'm showing you all the information that's on his Facebook page. Uh, so if it's on his fa Facebook page, I'm pretty sure he don't mind uh, me showing it to you guys. Um, let me see if I can get it close. Uh, his number is 773-936-8995. Like I said, he's in the Chicago area, the Midwest area. So if you're looking for someone in that area uh, to install stereo systems, that's your man. I hope that works out for you, Guido. I yeah, hope. Uh, look forward to seeing you sometime this year at one of these uh, bike rallies. Uh, I know if you're there, you're going to be showing out. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, other than that, let's get started on... Uh, the installation of going over on black flash uh, that I did for this triple battery setup. So y'all stay tuned. GoPro, stop recording. Hey, 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 hey. Alright YouTube, let's get ready to go over this uh, triple battery setup that I have completed for you all. 
I try my best to get through it as fast as possible uh, because I know this is going to be a little time consuming and probably you're probably going to have some questions. Uh, you can, you're more than welcome to hit me up in the comment section. And uh, if you're on Facebook, you can also hit me up on Facebook if you got any questions. All right, let's get started. All right, in this triple battery setup, I got my primary battery, I got my secondary battery, and I got my third battery, which is here in my trailer box. I'm going to go over the exp go over and explain how I got it set up and explain everything to you. All right, starting with my primary battery, uh, which is here. I have it hooked up to a 150 amp fuse. I'll go ahead and show that to you right quick. All right, so this is my battery, my primary battery, and here is my 150 amp fuse. It's located here. My 150 amp blade fuse. All right, going from the 150 amp blade fuse, it's going all the way back through, going punched all the way back through the back, and coming back up. From the 150 amp blade fuse, it goes to my isolator my 150 amp isolator so this is my primary coming off the primary battery uh, connection from the 150 blade fuse and then here i have a hundred a four gauge wire going from here as you can see a four gauge wire going from my auxiliary port from my hundred my isolator and it's also going connecting to a 150 amp fuse which is here all right from that 150 amp fuse it is going directly to my secondary battery all right now keep in mind from this from this primary battery through the isolator and coming back down going to the second battery that is a dual battery setup. Dual battery meaning it taking two batteries to operate. Uh, to operate, meaning that my primary battery is running my motorcycle, my secondary battery is running all my accessories. Now this is where it started kind of getting a little bit complicated, and I'm gonna try my best. That's why I drew out this diagram to help you out. I going to coming from my 150 amp blade fuse going to my battery okay uh, going to my battery hot side uh, that's giving me my connection going through primary isolator and the fuses going back to my second battery so we are here right now all right now from here i have two i have two different fuse blade uh fuse uh, fuse blocks first fuse block is here it's on a 30 amp fuse which is located here in this corner this fuse block is the one that's running all my rolling ice lights it has an additional 30 amp relay fuses coming from it. it is connected to a 30 amp fuse and then it is connecting to a 30 amp relay which has six different ports on it uh this is a misrepresentation because that's 12 but the one i have here is six okay i have six connections going here i my this fuse block which is this one is connected to the battery's accessory so it does not get activated until my bike is turned on. So stay with me. It has its own 30 amp fuse and then each one of the lights for my rolling eyes, the controller box, each one, I have a total of six or seven of them, I believe. Each one is connected to one of these different ports, which is also ran with a 30 amp, relay, uh, 30 amp uh, fuse, okay? That's my first fuse block. I also have a second fuse block, which is always hot. So I have another hot wire coming from my auxiliary battery going to a 30, uh, going to a 150 amp blade fuse. And from that 150 amp blade fuse is going to my secondary 
fuse block. The secondary fuse block is always hot, meaning that it is always on. Okay, now, the first fuse block is running all my lights. My second fuse block is running all my other accessories. Okay, I'll go over some of the additional stuff I have in, in here to explain it to you. Okay, now, at this point, I have a dual battery setup running everything that's on my motorcycle. It's just the stuff that you see here. Now, the problem, like I said, I stated earlier, I was having a problem with the battery that's in my trailer. As you can see, it has its own battery. It is not connected to the bike. The battery on the trailer can also run everything on my trailer. But the minute that battery died out, I had no way of going back to recharge it unless I bring it back home, put it on a tender, charge it back up, and then I'm off, I'm good to go. All right, so the whole purpose of me creating this triple battery, this triple battery setup, was I needed to be able to push power from the second battery going to the third. All right, so this is what I came up with. All right, from the second battery, I have a four gauge wire going to, uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. I have a four gauge wire going down to a 150 amp circuit breaker, which is up here in this corner. And then that circuit breaker is also going to a 150 amp blade fuse. That 150 amp blade fuse is connected on a four gauge wire and it is coming back out under the bottom of the motorcycle. So I have a four gauge hot wire getting going into my battery box to be connected to my battery. All right, now let me go over the ground because I didn't mention the ground. The ground from my primary battery, okay, is also connected directly to my secondary battery, my auxiliary battery. That's a direct connection. I have another ground wire coming from the secondary battery, going all the way up under the bike, coming back out, and it is going to the second auxiliary battery which is the third battery this connection from the secondary battery to the third battery is a parallel connection because you have hot positive going to positive and negative going to negative that's the difference in the two connections this is a parallel connection with two batteries positive to positive negative to negative whereas i have a dual battery set up as a primary battery coming to my secondary battery as a dual battery set up using a isolator okay there is another dual battery setup called series it does not belong on a motorcycle so i'm not going to even go over and explain it to you <coughs> excuse me but to make it make it perfectly clear on a series you'll be going from positive to negative on your second battery and from vice versa on the second battery going back to the first that'll change it to a series and that's a, <clears throat> also doubles the votes for your batteries meaning it changed from a 12 volt to a 24 volt you do that on a motorcycle and your motorcycle name becomes flames because it will burn up. Don't ever do that. You're using a dual battery, use a dual battery setup, use an uh, isolator or use a dual battery setup as a parallel connection. Positive, positive to positive, negative to negative. 
are positive isolator, positive fuse, if you want to use a fuse, and then it's going to the second battery. That's the difference in the two. Like I said, the third one, which is a series, do not belong on a motorcycle, so don't use it. All right, let's get off of that soapbox. Now, from this point, I want to be able to send power from my second battery to my third. And that is the purpose of the circuit breaker. Once I turn on the circuit breaker, it changes from my single battery to a dual parallel setup which now this battery is giving power to this battery and it's going back and forth. So now, instead of doubling the volts in a series, I am doubling the amps. Amps is what it takes for your, your electronics to operate. It doubles the amps, so that means I have more power to run my gadgets, run my lights on my bike and trailer. So once I flip my circuit breaker, power is pushed to the motorcycle. I was pushed to the trailer battery. And I got this light up here to show an example. I don't have the battery connection done yet, but I'm finished wiring the box. And I set this light up to make sure that while the bike is off, if I want to send power to my second battery if the bike is on or not my circuit breaker will allow me to do that here we go circuit breaker activated light is on circuit breaker tripped light is off indicating that there is no power coming from my second battery going to my third alright so that is my complete setup what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and take off all the safety stuff I got on, take off my battery chargers, and actually connect up all three batteries, meaning it's going from the battery, I mean from the motorcycle, going to the trailer, and then we're going to take a voltmeter and see what the readings are for each different battery. And then I go over all the other stuff that's in here because I know y'all looking at it like, what the heck is all that stuff? So I'll go over that in a second. Y'all stay tuned. GoPro, stop recording. All right, I'm finna do a, 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 a boat check while the bike is off. Positive. I had to get some help on this one because I can't hold the camera. Man. Positive, negative. I, I'm getting 12.80, 12.88 on the primary battery while it's off. Go to the secondary battery. Make sure you get the numbers. On the secondary battery, while the bike is off, I'm getting 12.88 on the second battery while the, uh, while the bike is off. I'm just trying to make sure all the batteries are already charged. I haven't used this battery at all, the battery in the trailer, so it might be a little low. Negative, positive. The reading on this is 11.97. All right, so now I'm gonna start the bike up and get a reading all over again while the bike is on.
bag up your Alright, it's 14.59 with the uh, secondary battery. Now, with the bike off at the breaker switch, the battery and the third battery, the reading is 11.8. Nine seven with the circuit breaker off. Now I'm gonna turn the circuit breaker on. Turn the circuit breaker on. You heard it bad me on the pipe. And now the battery reading for the third battery is fourteen point six. So yes, it is sending power to the third battery. And that is exactly what I wanted. Kill the battery, kill the uh, circuit breaker. And that is exactly what I wanted. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now is go over, what I'm gonna do now is go over the different things that I have in the bike and answer some questions that people had asked. I'm sorry if this is getting dark for you or the light in here is starting to get dark, but I'm gonna try to answer some questions that people have asked me from the last video. First thing first is I told everyone I was gonna send the cables through my battery box and the first thing uh, one, of my, uh, one of the guys on YouTube said, why don't you use quick disconnects on the battery that's on the trailer? I, I looked it up and all the quick disconnects I came across, they connect to the battery, the first part or half of it. And then when you actually disconnect from the quick disconnect, you still have part of the quick disconnect on the cable. The problem I have with that is I got to be able to move. I got to be able to pull the cable back out from the battery box if I want to disconnect the battery. I mean disconnect from the trailer. And those quick disconnects, they're, they're allowing me to disconnect from the battery, but I cannot pull the cable back through the hole that the cable is going through. So this quick disconnect does no good it's not good for me it's simply connecting directly to the battery as you see now it's going to be my best option and when i want to disconnect from the trailer just unscrew the cables from the third battery pull them back through and i'm good to go now this is the holder that's for my this is the other question uh, about my rolling eyes lights I was asked how are you performing or sinking your rolling eyes on your mo on your trailer to the rolling eyes on your motorcycle and here's the answer I have built a I have fabricated my own wire to vehicle kit that's going to the wiring harness on the bike and it's coming through going under the bike and coming back out to the wire to vehicle kit connection on the trailer so that gives me a direct connection to the wiring harness for the rest just like the rest of the controllers dealing with the rolling eyes so my trailer is synced with the sequence on the bike when i perform a light show uh, on black flags the third question was asked okay once you disconnect from the trailer how are you going to tuck away your cables okay as you can see this holder that i made down here is actually cvc pipes that i have over here let me try my best to get this for you and what i have done is sorry about the angle of the light what i have done is simple I use the CVC. I use three CVC uh, PVC pipes, and I glued them together, and then I zip tied them. And what's going on here is these cable here represent 
the positive cable and the negative cable for my battery cables. When I disconnect the battery cable, as you can see, the cable is coming through as so. And this is the cable coming out of the tubing, positive cable and the negative cable. When I disconnect from the trailer, I just simply push my cable battery cable back into my holder and my cable is nice and tucked away what you see here is what I got going on here I got three holes for the simple fact or three PVC pipes for the simple fact the third hole is for my rolling eyes wire to vehicle kit that's coming from the bike going out to the trailer now that is a secret that I did not want anyone to know, but because it was asked, I, you know, I'm giving up that information. I, another question that was asked was, uh, oh, that's it. That was all the questions that was asked. So what I'm going to do now is try to go over everything that's in this trunk so I can explain to you exactly why I did what I did. Okay. Now, going back to my first fuse block is running all my lights okay like I said the bike comes on my lights can be turned on none of the lights can be turned on on the bike if the bike is off okay but when the bike comes on I do this right quick when the bike is on if I want to flip on one of my switches for my lights, flip a switch. Oh, I forgot my master switch. Turn that back off. I have a master switch that all the lights are connected to. If it's not on, then none of the switches will work either. Now, that's a safety protocol I did for myself. So once the master switch is on, the bike is on, if I flip any switch, then any of my lights that I want to come on, will come on. Each angle of the bike, each different area of the bike is operated by the switches. If I want the bike to come on, I turn on the first, I mean my first switch, so forth. I'm not going to bother turn on all these lights because I'm still working on the bike trying to do some other things. But now you got the scenario of what I was doing. Okay, now the second fuse block stays hot. So that means that anything that I plug up into it can automatically come on without the bike being on. And the primary example is I have a YouTube, I mean, <laughs> I have a USB port connected to my hot wire. So if I want to come in, my hot box, if I want to come in and plug in my phone, then all I have to do is stick my phone charger into my USB port and turn it on but like I said everything that I have stored on my bike also has its own cutoff switch so this USB port has a cutoff switch and to turn it on I have to turn on my USB I and mean, I have to flip the switch now my USB port which is connected to my hot box can operate and now I can charge my phone Lay it down in here somewhere, and boom, close my my uh, trunk, go all where I need to go, come back, and I have a charged phone. All right, that turned it off. All right, the other things that are in here, first thing first is each one of the batteries has its own battery tender connection. For the simple fact, on a dual battery setup, on this particular setup, it is ran by an isolator. So these two batteries are, even though they're operating on the motorcycle, they're actually operating at different times. Meaning that the battery for the primary is running the motorcycle, the battery secondary is running all my accessories. Now I can run my accessories if I want to without the bike being on. But at the same time, if I want to charge the second battery or I charge my primary battery, I can use a tender. 
to do so. And that's the very reason why I did that. The other things I got going on back here is the USB port for your thumb drive for your music. I ran a cable going all the way back around. So now this is where I will plug in my USB port for my music or my iPod or whatever you got. That's what I'll be connecting to now because now all of this is closed off. So I'll be plugging in my thumb drive, which I usually listen to. I'll be plugging it here in this thumb drive, uh, in this USB port. Now the other thing I wanted to show, which I thought was pretty genius on my part, is this flip switch connection. This is actually a CBC pipe that I cut into and it is connecting all the flip switches and just simply got it tucked down in there and to make sure that it don't come out or pop out I just stuck some leverage over here to stop it from moving or popping out any further but this is actually a CVC pipe that's cut underneath and I ran all of my flip switches up under it so I can uh, neatly tuck it away to get it out the way now everything else like I said is in the diagram uh, so that's it I, I'm done I ran the battery test for volts while the bike was off and I ran the battery test for the battery when the bike was on now it's one thing I want to make sure because I'm talking about dual battery setup and parallel battery setup but as you can see, I have a 150 blade fuse coming from my circuit breaker. Most people say that is not a parallel connection because you have a fuse, a fuse in between. I want to make sure everyone understand in a parallel connection, positive to positive, negative to negative. If you put in a fuse blade or fuse, it does nothing, and I mean nothing, in a parallel connection of dual batteries. It does nothing. It doesn't send more power to the second battery. It doesn't do anything. It's just there for one simple reason. If this primary battery or for my case the secondary battery overcharges it will stop any overcurrent going down to my second battery meaning it will blow that will sever the connection going to my secondary battery just like a circuit breaker once you pull the circuit uh, circuit breaker there's no more connection going to that second battery that blade fuse does the same thing. If it get hit and damaged, it is cut. The power to that second battery is cut. That is the only reason a fuse between a parallel connection on a dual battery setup, that is the only reason it is there. It has no other purpose whatsoever. So I want to make sure everyone perfectly understands that. Woo! Now, I know that's long, but like I said, I am done. I finished this up. Now, my uh, message to J4, I'll be bringing my bike down to you as soon as my parts come in. They still haven't made it yet, and it took me 30 days. As of, I think today is the 16th or the 15th of December. I started this process. I started this, and here it is the 16th. I'm just now finishing. And I still have not received my parts to take it down to custom wings for them to install my stereo system. But once I put my bike back together, it'll just be sitting here until the parts come in. And then I'll be U-hauling it down to uh, Texas uh, to uh, custom wings to get my audio system put in. Other than that, if you have any questions, hit me up. And uh, hit me up in the comment section and, and I'll be glad to hit you back. Other than that, that's my spill for the day. Y'all have a good one. GoPro, stop recording. Hey, 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 hey.